Before we look at any specific syllabus areas, I want to just talk about the exam technique that we'll need to bear in mind as we go through this course. And um, the first thing you need to realize about F9 is that it's not just a calculations paper. People think of F9 and think, oh, it's calculations, weighted average cost of capital, business valuations. That is the case, so you do have to do the calculations, but there are actually more marks often for the discussion parts. So you must know the theory for F9. Uh, you must be able to do those discussion parts well, or you will not pass. You cannot rely on just doing the calculations. On the other side of that, if you're not great at the calculations, if you don't quite get them all, well then you can know the basic calculations really well and then know the discussion. And if you do that, you will definitely pass. So you can know the simple calculations, but know your theory really well and still pass the F9 paper. But often we'll find that students are very good at the calculations, but they just don't know what it means. So we need to focus on that. We need to focus on what these calculations that we're doing actually mean and what the implications are for the business in the question. The other thing is that we need to leave enough time to do those discussion parts. We need to manage our time really well in the F9 paper because often you can find it takes you a little bit more time to do the calculations than you expected and then you don't have time to do the discussion parts. Well, as I mentioned, often those discussion parts form more of the question than the calculations parts. So if you don't get a chance to do the discussion, you won't get the marks. So you must leave enough time to do the discussion bits of the question as well as the calculations. So this is not just a calculations paper. You've got to get that out of your head now. Also, most of the marks will be for your workings. Now, what I mean by that is you may not get a chance to bring it all together into a structured answer because you need to leave enough time, for example, to do the discussion. So you may find that you're midway through the calculations and you run out of time. Well, that means the examiner is going to have to go back and mark your workings rather than the answer that you got to at the end. Because by the end of this course, you will know that you just need to leave it and move on to the next question. So you must make your workings neat and tidy because often the examiner will have to go back to those workings and try to discern what you meant or what you're trying to say. So you must keep those workings neat and tidy. If that means slowing down and writing a little bit slower, that's fine, do it. You can manage your time, keep your writing neat and still pass this exam, it is possible. Also reference all of your workings clearly. If you do get a chance to bring the answers into a final answer, so you've done a working, you then bring it into a final answer, make sure you reference it to say where that final answer came from because if it's incorrect, the examiner will have to go back and mark the workings that you did. So make those workings neat and tidy, reference them up so the examiner can see where they're coming from and make the most of those workings. Make sure the examiner can pick up the marks from them. You will be under time pressure in the F9 exam. That's it. There's not, oh, you might be under time pressure or it's possible to be under time pressure. You will be. There's no doubt about it. So the only way to get around this is to practice. And I mean practice. Practice, 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 practice. You must do every single past paper question that there is on the website, on the ACCA past paper website. You download them all and you'll do a lot of them when we do this course and then do any ones that we haven't looked at under timed conditions. If you fail the F9 exam, the only reason you will have failed it is that you didn't do enough work. It's not that you're not clever enough or you couldn't do it. You will not have done enough work because if you do every single past paper question you can get your hands on, you'll have seen it all before. And if you've done them all, do them all again because practice is the absolute key to F9, particularly if this is a subject that you're struggling with because you don't have to do uh, any paper above this. This doesn't lead on unless you choose to do P4. So if you don't like it, 
then get it done and forget about it. Do one of the other options. But to get it done, you must practice, practice, practice. And you must move on to the next question when your time is up in the exam. I'll talk a lot about this as we go through, but you've got 1.8 minutes per mark and that is it, strict. So if you have a 25 mark question and you have 10 marks, 10 marks and 5 marks, when it comes to 18 minutes in, you must move on to part B. No questions, no thinking about it, no saying, oh, I know this bit really well, I'll keep doing it. That's it. You leave it mid-sentence. You can write to the examiner, ran out of time, to let them know that you just left it. But that is what you do. You move on to the next question. I have had lots of students who have failed this paper multiple times and then done it again and passed. And the only thing they changed between the fails and the pass was that they moved on to the next question when their time was up and they finished the paper. That was it. That got them from a fail to a pass. So that's how important it is. If you don't finish this paper, if you leave a question out, you failed it. So if you leave the last question out, don't be sitting thinking, oh, I might have passed that. You failed. So you must finish the paper. I cannot stress that enough. And don't forget, there are easy marks available in this paper. So if you know the basics of everything on the F9 syllabus, that will be enough. Now that means everything. You cannot leave anything out. But I'm saying you don't need to load in a massive amount of detail. If you know the basics, that will be enough to pass as long as you structure your answer well, you move on when your time is up and you know the discussion parts. So that's what we're going to focus on. Don't forget also that common areas will come up repeatedly. So if you know them, that's where you're going to get your easy marks. Now, how are you going to know what the common areas are? Well, back to being under time pressure. You'll have practiced, 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 practiced. You'll have gone, oh, I've seen a question like this before and this is what I did. So people who fail the F9 exam often do so either because they didn't finish the paper or they hadn't done enough past paper practice. So you must have done every single question that there is on the ACCA page for past papers. So you must have done them all so that when you see those common areas, you know them and you can pick up those easy marks. So those are the things that you need to focus on as you go through this revision course. Knowing the discussion, understanding those bits when we go through it, making the most of your marks by keeping your workings neat and tidy and referencing them, making sure you've practiced enough past paper questions and under timed conditions so that you train yourself to move on when your time is up at 1.8 minutes per mark. And of course, knowing the basics of everything so that when those common areas come up, you know them and can pick up those easy marks.